The country of Iran is incredibly diverse. For example, when you go up into the western regions of the country, people typically have higher levels of Anatolian DNA. And when you go down towards the east towards Mashhad, people have higher levels of both East and South Asian related admixture. You know, what's really interesting about the Iranian genome guys is that they're like a combination of the three ancestral populations which contribute to most Iranian peoples. We are going to look at the average Iranian genome through a variety of different time periods to understand who these people are through a genetic perspective. Over here, I've got a Stone Age DNA breakdown of the average Iranian. And interestingly, what we see is that around 35% of their DNA is Iranian Neolithic related. Now guys, the Iranian Neolithic farm is one of the first people to inhabit the Iranian plateau and they contribute substantially to most populations within the region. It's found in the Persians, it's found in the Kurds, it's found in the Azeris, but interestingly it peaks in the Baluch. These Iranian Neolithic farmers were one of the first populations in the region to discover agriculture and they originated in the Zagros mountains of Iran. But if we look closely at this breakdown over here, what we see is that around 30% of their DNA is Anatolian Neolithic farmer related. And that's because guys, around 8,000 years ago, there was yet another migration. This time, it was characterized by agriculturalists who originated in Anatolia, who migrated within the Iranian plateau, mixing with the Iranian Neolithic farmers to form a hybridized population known as Iranian Chalcolithic. It's this Iranian Chalcolithic DNA which is the characteristic genetic signal found in all Iranian populations. It's found in the Persians, it's found in the Lore, it's found in the Mazandarani, as well as a slew of other populations. These Iranian Chalcolithic people would lay the foundations of many pre-Iranian civilizations like that of Elam. They would exist within the region for many many years but then around 3000 years ago there was yet another migration. This time, it was characterized by steppe nomads who originated in Central Asia, migrating within the Iranian plateau. These were the Indo-Iranians, who themselves were the descendants of a people known as the Yamnaya, who originated in the Pontic Caspian steppe of Monday, Russia and Ukraine. These ancient Indo-European people would eventually migrate within Kazakhstan, where they would form the Indo-Iranians. From here, these ancient Indo-Iranian people would migrate further south, mixing with a group known as the Bimak or Bactria Margiania archaeological complex people in Turkmenistan. These Bimak people were heavily Iranian Chalcolithic derived, and when the Indo-Iranians migrated southwards, they heavily mixed with these people. By the time these ancient Indo-Iranians arrived within the Iranian plateau, they were heavily Iranian Chalcolithic mixed. By migrating within the region, they would pick up on many traditions and customs of the Iranian Chalcolithics and eventually lay the foundations of the ancient Persian Empire. This is why guys, when we look into the ancient DNA breakdown of the average Iranian, around 14% of their DNA is Indo-European steppe related. Contrary to popular belief, the Islamic expansions didn't really change the genetic profile of the average Iranian. Natufian DNA when detected only reaches levels at around 7% and this in itself is a pre-Islamic source. This implies that the Islamic expansions of Persia were relatively peaceful. In contrast, however, the Turco-Mongol migrations of the 12th to 15th centuries were not, and they left a major demographic change within the region. Around 50% of the Iranian population was massacred during this time period, and that's why when we look into a medieval DNA breakdown of the average Iranian, around 2% of their DNA is East Asian derived. These levels elevate when we look into the Iranians of Khorasan as well as the Iranian Azeris who have around 4 to 6% East Asian related admixture. Guys, I've actually been filming this video in the lovely city of Barcelona and I've got a fantastic vantage point of the entire city over here. Check that out. I've been traveling the world for the past year and a half making more money than I ever have solely through TikTok and content creation. I'd be more than happy to share all the tips, tricks, and strategies that I've personally implemented that have enabled me to live this digital nomadic lifestyle. So if you're interested in learning more about that, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, guys, I sent the utmost blessings to you from the lovely lands of Catalonia, and I'll catch you on the next video. Ciao.